Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Kasha, Kasha Kainz, um, CEO and founder of EBV Global Institute. And today we're going to talk about a very hot topic, monolaurin. If you have EBV or if you treat EBV, treat your patients, you probably stumbled upon monolaurin. Studies look great. You know, everybody's supposed to use it if uh, they have EBV. And it doesn't make the cuts in our protocol, even though I do talk about it in my book, The EBV Solution, uh, because studies looked good. You know, it's expected that people with EBV will uh, have a good response to monolaurin, and it's so much more complicated. <laughs> so um, it's, a, it's a very expensive topic. So what I did yesterday is actually I drafted a blog, an entire article with references, medical studies, and, uh, and also details of how to use it if you are using it, uh, whether it's monolaurin or loracidine, two popular supplements. There are uh, dosage recommendations, uh, very specific because you, be, you have to be strategic when you use any supplement with EBV. Otherwise, you can, you can be on 30 supplements and still not moving the needle. Uh, so the blog will be coming. We will post the link to the blog uh, under this video uh, as soon as that's ready. So then you can dive in into details because this training is, uh, is not going to be too long. I want to keep it simple and practical. So first of all, what is monorolin? It's a derivative from coconut oil and it's a fatty acid. Let me read you exactly what it is, a little technical terms, hold on here. It's a 12 carbon long fatty acids made into a monoester of lauric acid. So uh, FDA consider is grass uh, generally safe. However, we don't have safety studies for long-term applications, especially uh, especially higher dosages that may be necessary for EBV. So that's a problem for me. Um, I like to use things that are, pr that are predictable, sustainable, with long-term efficacy <coughs> that are actually supporting the body on, um, and on many levels. And uh, monolaurin does not provide that. So let's talk about studies that are so promising um, and why people are so excited about it. Let me pull out some, some of the pathogens that actually respond to monolaurin in studies. Uh, and there's quite a quite a lar larger group. Any pathogen that has an envelope that contains lipids or phospholipids will be a target for monolaurin. Hi, Wendy, Jody, Kathy. Hi. Hi, ladies. I'm glad you made it here live. Um, so there's a lot of pathogens that you can target. Let me read you some. Uh, these have the envelope around them. HIV-1, uh, influenza, paramyxoviruses, rubella, bronchitis, uh, herpes family, cytomegalovirus, herpes zoster, which is shingles, varicella, which is chicken pox, herpes type 1 and 2. Uh, there's also gram-positive bacteria, staph, for example, and strep. Uh, and uh, so gram-positive bacteria respond to monolaurin. Uh, gram-negative bacteria do not, for example, Klebsiella. The one exception to gram-negative um, is H. pylori. H. pylori actually uh, does respond to, to monolaurin. One more thing, fungal infections, Candidalbicon seems to be uh, susceptible, uh, sensitive to uh, monolaurin, in particular its biofilm. So with that, you would think that monolaurin would be absolutely effective, miraculous, and so on and so forth. Would I use monolaurin for all these pathogens and rely on it exclusively to clear them? No. <laughs> so the only reason I might use it is if I have a bucket full of co-infections, and they include Candida albicans and H. pylori, which is not uncommon in our community, and then we have EBV. So let's talk about EBV a little bit. Um, let me hear. The, according to studies, monolaurin will weaken or damage these viruses, including EBV. And let me see here. There was a study, an old study from 1982 that was saying 
monolaurin had 99.9% effectiveness against all the enveloped RNA and DNA viruses that would include EBV. So, okay, so that sounds great. So why wouldn't I use monolaurin? And, um, you know, monolaurin, so some people want to use coconut oil to get monolaurin. Uh, I would say coconut oil is not the best source if you want to ther if you want a real therapeutic effect. So you want to use a supplementation, just straight for monolaurin or a brand name Lorasidin. Uh, if you use too much coconut oil, it actually can raise your cholesterol. And actually, I've just seen a, a complaint from somebody in our community that said, I've been using monolaurin and my liver enzymes are up. So cholesterol, liver enzymes, what's going on with monolaurin? Um, monolaurin, uh, here's what it does. And here's what I don't like you to experience. There's a concept in medicine and functional medicine called Herxheimer reaction. Basically, it's a retox reaction or die off. We probably ha are familiar with the word uh, die off. Um, so die off or, uh, reaction means that your process of detoxifying or your process of dumping or cleaning or killing is too fast. The body can't really cope with it. It's, it's too ex expansive, too aggressive. The body gets stuck. You have stacking effect of being becoming more toxic. So let's talk about EBV in this context. When you have EBV, you're already compromised. And EBV creates a lot of toxic debris just from the metabolic waste, the metabolic activity. It creates a lot of oxidative stress, free radical damage. That's just EBV. So that's one, one part. So uh, when you have a lot of toxic debris, your liver uh, has to clear it. Your liver is really taxed. Some people have elevated liver enzymes or a non-alcoholic fatty liver or even autoimmune hepatitis or enlarged liver just because of EBV. Um, and that can be from toxicity, but sometimes EBV targets the liver as well. So it's really bad news for the liver. You have to be really careful. You don't want to have too much fat in your diet uh, because that puts a strain on the gallbladder and liver and gallbladder talk. So when liver gets really sluggish, the gallbladder will get sluggish. This is like a very complicated so some of the worst diets can be uh, high fat diets actually for EBV so for some of these reasons. And so when you, when you have EBV, it means that you've already had a lot of toxicity externally as well because environmental toxins can trigger EBV. So if you have active EBV, you may have had molds. You may have had environmental toxins like exposure to dioxins and so and many more. So you're already compromised, you're already dealing with toxicity, and then you have toxicity from EBV, and then you bring monolaurin in. Can you imagine what the body has to deal with? So then people get sick, and the most common symptoms will be headaches, malaise. It's the kind of symptoms you get when you have a flare-up from EBV. You feel awful. So what I need you to understand is you have just stacked up so much toxic debris. Because when, you, when you're targeting EBV to kill it, to destroy its envelope, you create a lot of toxic debris. And sometimes even the dead toxic debris from dead pathogens is as detrimental, sometimes even worse, than the live pathogen was. So the body has to deal with it. A uh, couple of things to uh, keep in mind if you are using monolaurin and if you are having the die-off uh, reactions, please turn down the volume on the dosing and stay within the dosing that doesn't produce those reactions. And number two, you have to move bowels twice a day, do whatever you need, get fiber, a lot of water, make sure you move bowels because this is where the toxic debris needs to go. This is how you excrete it, most of it, majority of it. So if you constipate it, don't you dare do monolaurin because you're gonna be so toxic. And the problem is if you don't move the toxins out through stool, they're going to get reabsorbed in the bloodstream. The bloodstream, I always say, is like a taxi. It delivers nutrients or toxins 
everywhere. So it's going to get in the blood, into your brain, into your tissues, into your muscles, into your, you know, everywhere, joints, organs, uh, glands. That's why people get so sick. And so the one thing I want to keep in mind is the die-off is not a badge of honor. If any practitioner tells you, you know, you're just going to go through die-off, uh, that's fine. No, you do not want this situation. It's not a healing crisis, as some people call it. It's a crisis. And just to scare you a little bit, so you're aware of it, I've had over the years a couple of cases of women who did aggressive detoxes of one form or another. One was an aggressive weight loss uh, uh, within a medical system and another went to a very famous uh, retreat when there was a water fast. One woman developed uh, fibromyalgia a few months later and another a very aggressive, uh, unusual aggressive rare rheumatoid arthritis just out of nowhere. Um, if you followed what I said, you probably have an idea why these things may be triggered. So. Um, for for me, the EBV protocol will be successful if we are very strategic every time we open our mouth. So if you take a supplement, it needs to multitask. There's a big difference between what monolaurin does and what something like selenium does. Selenium is instrumental for your thyroid function. It helps you build glutathione. It helps protect your liver. It has so many benefits and so many functions, and it's a key antioxidant. It has so many benefits and it turns down and turns off the virus. It doesn't kill, kill it like monolaurin, so it doesn't create the die off reaction. You just feel better. So, monolaurin cannot produce that. Monolaurin is not really a key nutrient we need. And so, for me, it's really not worth it. Um, that's basically the big message that I want you to have. Uh, what else? If you're using monolaurin, like I said, hydrate, bowel movements twice a day, you must be on B-complex because B vitamins help detoxify properly even daily. And you should really have liver support because you're putting so much pressure on liver with monolaurin. You need to support it. And uh, let me see here. What else? Yeah, the rest is I'm looking at the blog that I have just drafted. So the rest will be in the blog, the dosages the alert, you know, where to find monolaurin, where to f find lorisidin, the dosages of each, uh, exactly how to work with them within each form. So you're going to get all these details. We'll link it below. Let me see. There's some comments here in our thread. Um, yes, I was wondering monolaurin would raise cholesterol. That That's what uh, Jody's asking. So I can tell you that coconut oil definitely raise, ra ra raises the cholesterol. I was surprised myself. We've had some reports in our community, and then I looked at the studies, and yep, studies confer confirm that it happens. If monolaurin itself can raise cholesterol, I'm not sure. We have had reports in the community about liver enzymes being elevated. And now that you listen to this conversation, uh, you will understand why. You don't want your liver elevated. It's a red flag. You have to turn down the volume on that on that supplement. What tests can we do to check the liver instead of just blood tests as they read normal? AST and ALT are typically great tests. There's also visceral manipulation. It's a manual technique, and practitioners can actually palpate your liver and see if, if it feels that it's out of place or it's a little enlarged that might, you know, it's, it's not invasive. So that's another technique. Uh, uh, let me see, but that's not a lab. Let me see if there's any other question. So I don't see any more questions from you here today live about monolaurin. So yeah, so I would say one more thing of caution. I would not rely on monolaurin 100% as the one magic pill to clear your EBV. There may be a situation when you've been on monolaurin and you will have to rely on it because as soon as you stop using it, you go to square one and reactivate. That's what I mean about not being sustainable. 
uh, the protocol we use is so comprehensive. It's supplements, but it's also diet, but it's also emotions, but it's also environmental toxins, all the things that you need to be aware of because you don't want to be relying on one particular supplement without actually shifting the body, building the body up and having all the equipment, so to speak, within um, all the other tools to manage your life better. So it's much harder for the EBV to strike and reactivate. That would be the that would be the, the conclusion for me. And monolaurin is not a holy grain, unfortunately. Um, so please avoid the die of reaction, be safe. And consider getting my book if you haven't, because we have all these various supplements and uh, dosages, all that is explained. I did write about monolaurin in the book. Uh, it, you know, the book was written a couple of years ago. And so, just based on what I've seen, what I've heard, what we've experienced as the EBV community at large, uh, made me realize it's really not worth it. <laughs> it didn't make the cut. So with that, thank you so much. Uh, this call has been a little bit longer than typical, but that's a big topic and it's a little bit complicated. So hopefully it gave you more clarity and you're gonna have better conversations with your practitioner if you're working with somebody not expecting that this will actually be the solution for you and that it will be safe. With that, uh, I'll see you on the next call. Bye.